Um, yeah, amazing. Well, let's do this Amy Siskin thing uh, before we get uh, back to serious matters. But just to remind people who she is. Um, so I see. Can I full screen this somehow? Um, well, actually, yeah, see if we can get this this uh, tweet up first because I'd like to set up uh, her bio um, okay. after after we see what she said why she's come to our attention. Okay. Yeah. We uh, here we go. So. I'll share this, a beautiful tweet that she since deleted, which is why it took a bit of a effort to get it back up. But it's, yeah, David. So uh, this is Amy Siskind uh, tweeting, proposed map, New York and California are sick of supporting these red welfare states. And for those listening, the map is this stupid map, this meme that you've probably seen a thousand times at this point, um, where, you know, Illinois... Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, I can't go through all the states, uh, and the entire Northeast, along with the Pacific Northwest and, Ca- um, and California, leave the United States and join with Canada uh, to create some kind of monster called the United States of Canada. Um, yeah, that thing would really sell weapons to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and as a little dig at the rest of us in this country, uh, you know, if you don't live, um, in the Northeast or in the Pacific Northwest, uh, you now live in Jesus land. Oh, um, and it, it's just, it, it's such like mid 2000s uh, liberalism, you know, John Stewart style. I remember that book uh, got better off without them. I don't know if you ever came across Oof. that, but it pissed me off. It was this kind of like liberal, you know, Yankee argument that, oh, if we got rid of the South and all of our social problems would be uh, solved. Um, and Matt, actually, if you don't mind on mm-hmm. the on the doc, if you go down a little bit, uh, there's a, a tweet too that you should bring up in a second. Um, but let me just make this point because this thing really digs digs at me and gets me mad. One, it's stupid, right? It's it's absolutely stupid. And people have been making, you know, pointing out, for example, that you know, uh, territories like Alberta and Saskatchewan uh, aren't particularly <laughs> uh, liberal places, uh, you know, which fine. Uh, but that's not the, necessarily the problem with this map. The problem with this map is this whole idea, um, you know, that these other states are, you know, welfare states, that they're reliant on, you know, Yankee industry and Yankee money. Um, and our friend um, Erica, the white trans socialist, makes a good point here, Matt. If this one? You bring up up. Um, that she says, I swear to God, uh, you know, liberals just want an ethno state. Um, and the map uh, for people who are listening uh, shows the percentage of, of uh, counties population identifying as both black or African-American and uh, non-Hispanic. And if you see there, the highest concentrations of those populations um, are in Jesus land, are in the South, right? Which is a point that needs to be made over and over again is that while all these liberals love to make, you know, these points about how they're the, you know, the anti-racist group, um, they are the first ones who want to actual wage, you know, literal economic war on the parts of the country that are the most diverse. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing too, like, as if the wealth of this country isn't extremely bolstered by... Uh, for instance, like all the agriculture that happens in the middle of the country, like that as if that money isn't why these these coastal areas are so rich. Right. Yeah. Like, like they're no, detached no, no. somehow. You know, let's make this point really clear. And uh, we'll get back to Amy in a second and why her bio is so funny for making this this tweet. But you get this every once in a while. Um, especially from New Yorkers that say things like, oh, we actually fund the federal government, right? And all these other states don't. First of all, the way that they frame that is ridiculous because people get this idea in their heads that, you know, somebody who makes $50,000 a year in New York is getting taxed more than somebody who's making $50,000 $50, a year in South Carolina. No, those are federal tax rates. They are the same. Why do you think that New York, um, you know, is ending up paying more than other states? Huh, I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that this massive parasitic class of billionaires and millionaires have the highest concentration in states like New York and Massachusetts um, <laughs> and Connecticut, right? Yeah. They pay more because that's where the wealthy people live in. And if you're like, listen, like, let's drop even like our socialist perspective on this. If you're supposed to be a liberal who loves taxes, right? Why are you making this kind of bizarre argument that we shouldn't have a progressive, uh, you know, scale tax system in this country and instead move to some bizarre regional movement. It's obviously absurd. And we also need to make this point endlessly clear. Why do New York 
have more millionaires and billionaires um, and you know Connecticut and Massachusetts. Well, there's a little thing called Wall Street, which is a system that extracts value from the rest of this country and the rest of the world and funnels it in um, to this very specific region right? And allows for those people to profit immensely off of extracting the natural resources of this country um, and also the labor of people uh, around the globe. And let's also not forget this with our you know, good capitalist mentality. If you want to make money, you need money to invest. So we can't also you know, exclude the fact that these are areas that benefited financially immensely off of slavery and off of the, continu uh, and off of the, uh, the continued genocide of you know, indigenous peoples in this country. Right? These are not people who are innocent of the crimes of the United States. These are people who have benefited immensely from it. And this kind of bizarre argument that they make that somehow now um, they should have no responsibility to funding the federal government is absurd. And if I could just make one more quick point on this, uh, this is why if you want to live in a, in a country like the United States that has a shared currency, you need to find a way to redistribute wealth throughout that society. Why? Look at what happened in the European Union over these past few years, right? If you have a, a an economy that is using a currency like, for example, in Greece's case, the euro, right, which is highly valued, it puts you in a difficult position to be able to sell your goods and services um, on the you know, international markets, right, because you're using a currency that's extremely highly valued. Um, so what you need to do is you need to find a way to redistribute the excesses of that society. And that's why the United States federal government functions in the way that it does, because you can't have a part of the country that's using the same currency, right, that is going to be highly valued um, in New York, and then not be able to provide the basic needs of people in South Carolina, um, Mississippi, et cetera, right? Because um, if you do that, then you're going to have a currency crisis on your hands and you're not going to be able to have a functioning economy in those other states. That's why we designed the system to work the way that it does. That's why we have a federal government that provides aid to people. And also let's not forget what kind of aid we're talking about here. Social security, Medicare, Medicaid, um, and our very meager, meager but important welfare state for people, right? This is what they're complaining about is that poor people in the South right, are getting things like Medicaid and are getting things like food stamps, et cetera, right, which are funded through, you know, the federal government. It's absurd. It's a disgusting argument through and through. Its cultural aspects are disgusting, but when you actually take it a little bit, you know, <laughs> look under the hood, it's even worse. Uh, so let's look under the hood of uh, Amy Siskind for... Uh... Well, and actually... Oh, okay. the no, no, no. You know, let's pull it up because it's so good. Um, because like, like maybe this person, Amy Siskin, doesn't understand the role that, you know, New York finance plays um, in immiserating the rest of the country. But let's just see what she does. Okay, well, let's first go to her Twitter page where this all started. So um, activist, feminist, author. Interesting. Those are things that generally, you know, I don't have problems with. The Weekly List website, POSC, I have no idea what the Weekly List is. Haven't, haven't come across it. And book, Political 50. Okay, now we're starting to get sus. Um, <laughs> president of the New Agenda. Okay, I don't know what that is. Former Wall Street exec. Now, that's hmm. funny way to put it because that can be read two ways. That can be one, like, oh, I, this, I respect this person's credibility because they've been in the, the halls of Wall Street and they know, like, serious economics or something. Or it could be, like, as if she's, like, um, you know, chastened and you know, regrets it somehow. I think it's a bit of the, I think she's trying to play a little bit, a little bit both ways, but let's go to her LinkedIn. Amy Siskins is a national spokesman, blah, 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 blah. On Wall Street, Amy was a pioneer in the distressed debt trading market. Oh. She became the first female managing director at Wasman Prata. I mean, okay, she's been on Wall Street since the 80s is the, is the uh, NYU Stern, okay. Uh, Cornell and yeah, she's been working for banks. Banks, 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 until uh, the like 2008 when she starts to get political. Now, you might be wondering, maybe she like, you know, saw the light after hanging out with those complete vultures on Wall Street. Well, her contribution to politics uh, is sort of <laughs> really summarized in this 2012 piece called uh, Should Women Back Palin in 2012? And here's a choice paragraph from it. I am a lifelong Democrat who for the first time in my life voted Republican. So she, the entire time she was at Wall Street, the entire time she was at Wall Street, she was a Democrat. She leaves Wall Street. She becomes, she starts voting Republican. 
I'm Jesus a lifelong Christ. Democrat who for the first time in my life voted Republican in 28 elections. Now, I don't know if that's true. I think she might be lying. But if it's true, it's insane. I did this for one reason. McCain selected a woman as a running mate. For this act, I was accused of having lost part of my mental factory. Some circa Victorian act of, quote, voting with my eaters. I love how these, like, these, like, these summar- summarizations of the critique where the... <laughs> Um, strange that the Democratic women were corralled to vote corralled to vote for Obama in 2008 because of one oh issue: God. reproductive rights. Yeah. Look, I mean, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one issue uh, why people were voting for Obama over Jesus. John McCain, right? I mean, gee, give me a break. I mean, these people. Yeah. There's there's not much underneath it. I mean, these are people who are elitist and freaks, and and they're liberals in the in the sense in like the kind of like Twitter sense of the word. They like to, you know, point towards, you know, people who are hurting marginal people, um, but they functionally, uh, you know, they actually just really want to continue the and, and paying that working people in this country all across the board, you know, are suffering under. And it's so, so stupid and don't get wrapped up into it. Look, we all hate Republicans, you know, don't get us wrong. But this kind of really stupid red state, blue state mentality ain't going to get us anywhere. And you're lining yourself up with literal Wall Street executives yeah. who have this bizarre fascination with Canada. Yeah. Are we going to get in trouble with Noah Berlatsky for criticizing this? Because I'm mean, sure. I'm first. sure. I mean, this is why class is rather important once things start hitting the road is like this is she's the epitome of the lean in white feminism where it's basically just can white women, which is noted by everybody. By the mm. way, not just like uh, dude bro white podcasters like myself. This is a common uh, cliche people have of a uh, white feminist, which is like you just want to be able to exploit people the way white men do. Basically, mm. uh, you want that you want that position, and that's what Amy Siskind wants. Uh, and <laughs> and she's, uh, I mean, what a freak, man! Like, oh, honestly. absolutely a freak. I mean, at least she had the good sense to delete that after people were harassing her. And I normally I wouldn't bring up somebody who gets dunked on on Twitter and then deletes their stuff. But this but, is somebody who literally, no, no, this is somebody who is like actually positioning themselves as a kind of political leader and has like actual material power in the society. So absolutely, I'll bring her name into it. Yeah, this is the problem with liberals generally. Like they're unable to differentiate themselves from absolute freaks like this when it comes to issues that they care about. Amy Siskins, Amy Siskins, she's got the, the pride flag all over the place. She's uh, also act, like... Uh, it's it's grim stuff and i just think like i'm 500 000 followers follow this woman as some kind of like guide to the scary times we live in her her um you know on her on twitter her background picture is like people marching through the streets oh to, yeah we won't oh. let you down rbg <laughs> I mean, that's all. I mean, she let us down, you idiot. That's the Stupid, point. Right? No, because this is somebody who would, who would never show solidarity, for example, uh, with the people who, again, tomorrow's a really big day um, in, in Alabama and for the country and, and the globe um, in this fight against Amazon as, uh, you know, workers and an Amazon facility in Bessemer, uh, Alabama are going to be voting for unionization. So absolute, you know, solidarity with all of them. And we'll be watching that really closely. And I hope that goes through. I've been following their social media presence and it's very much you know geared toward workers in the facility and i love their messaging so far but this is exactly the kind of struggles uh, that people like amy miss right because they don't recognize and it's, it's willful ignorance too by the way because this is not somebody i don't think um who would find too much that inspiring in a unionization drive uh, at an amazon <laughs> facility right she thinks it's like oh you know they need to that's listen. a balance of liability david <laughs> <laughs> because you know amazon's been putting on some kind of woke commercials uh you know during <laughs> sunday night football right oh, um you know i mean it's it's uh, a it, 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 these you know these people just are not our friends and we don't need to recruit them because honestly somebody who spent their whole life working on wall street and just immiserating people and specifically uh, you know, working on these horrible extractive industries, which have created such an unequal society in the United States. Uh, these people aren't our friends. And, you know, we need to understand that. And we also need to, uh, you know, push back against this kind of really stupid way of viewing the country that 
the elites are trying to make you think this way. Because I'll tell you one thing that a working class person um, in Queens, New York has a hell of a lot more in common that with a working class person in Alabama or any other part mm -hmm. of Jesus land than they do with somebody like Amy, right? So let's make sure that we're building that kind of cross class uh, solidarity and put yeah. all this kind of nonsense, cultural nonsense, you know, to the side. Honestly, what kind of like lunatic thinks that they are the common person when they have that arc of working on wall street for the 20 years leading up to wall street, destroying the world economy and then deciding <laughs> they're going to start voting for Sarah Palin. Like they, and, 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 and like, again, like I'm not even mad at her. I'm mad at like Alyssa Milano and all this bullshit oh. resistance shit we have welcoming these people as if they're not, uh, you know, heinous freaks that are trying to do people harm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, so <laughs> uh, Amy Siskin, I'm glad uh, you're you know, still out there tweeting because uh, it makes me feel alive to get that angry. <laughs> I know, I need to get a little <laughs> red in the cheeks there.